Welcome to Tea Time in the Tranquil Tuesdays Virtual Tea Room. I'm Charlene, founder of Tranquil Tuesdays and a featured Asia store artisan. I started Tranquil Tuesdays 10 years ago in Beijing to showcase China's finest teas and to help people discover one of China's ancient traditions. For years, Asia store at Asia Society has been a wonderful home to showcase my tea. And today I'm excited to partner with Asia store on a new video where you'll discover the art of tea from appreciating Asian tea culture to brewing the perfect cup. Today, I will be brewing Chimin black tea. So these are what Chimin black tea leaves look like. As you see, they're tiny little leaves. Um, Chimin, which is also known as Kimin, or spelled like Kimin, has a long history of being traded outside of China. And it started in um, Chimin Anhui in 1875. That's where it's grown and made. Um, and Chimin is actually historically the base of English breakfast tea. So, I'm going to be using this little teapot today and this decanter to make the tea. First, I'm going to heat up the teapot. I like to heat up all the pieces I'll be using to make tea. Um, it's a good way to prime everything, get them ready. Sort of how like you would heat your pan before cooking or serve freshly made food on a hot plate. This teapot is 150 milliliters, and I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of tea. Yeah, okay. So before we do the first rinse, you want to use pretty hot water for black teas. Um, you can use somewhere between 200 and 212, which is boiling water. Uh, this is probably closer to 200 because I had it's been out a little bit. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is a rinse. And like I said before, the purpose of a rinse is to just prime your leaves to get them ready to really open up and release their flavors. And I know black tea is kind of probably the least sexy and least glamorous of teas, but I do think it needs some love and attention too and some really good black tea tastes really great. Um, okay. So we're gonna do the first steeping. I'm just gonna pour straight into here. You can steep this a little longer than you would um, green teas or oolongs. You can do at least a minute. Um, you do have to Think about oversteeping though with black teas also, because I'm sure many of you have experienced uh, drinking black tea that's been steeped for a long time and it's that really uncomfortable, astringent, tight feeling. And that is what happens when you oversteep black tea. Uh, that is the tannins, which are one of the polyphenols in tea, really expressing itself. And um, I'm gonna just pour this out right here. And oversteeping with astringence and the astringency that occurs because of oversteeping is actually one of the key reasons why milk works um, so well with black teas. But we're gonna talk about that more in a second after this first steeping. I think we're t I think it's time. So you'll see here this is like a beautiful golden, warm, deep brew. Actually, in Chinese, black tea is called red tea not black, the color is red in the Chinese word, hong cha. Um, so we're gonna try this first. And like I said, qi min was traditionally the base of English breakfast tea, but I think a really good qi min tea it tastes great on its own with no other... Yeah, see, it's like really um, like kind of almost caramelly and there's a sweetness to it and a sort of robust 
smokiness almost. It tastes so nice. It's just so robust and there's so much flavor. And, you're, and I know we're not really used to expecting that much out of a black tea because I think all, most of us have been just drinking black tea that's meant to be drink with, drinking with milk and um, sugar. But a really well, a really good high quality black tea has a lot of exciting flavor notes to discover on its own. So let's talk a little bit about milk and tea. In Asian tea culture, no one drinks milk with their teas. It's just not part of the traditional diet. Dairy is not really part of the traditional diet in Asia. And adding milk to tea is something that would be unfathomable to centuries of tea drinkers in China. Um, but, you know, that's definitely part of the British tea drinking tradition and a lot of the Western tea drinking tradition. And in fact, chemically, it makes a lot of sense because I had mentioned that one of the um, polyphenols, which is a, a chemical that plants make, in black tea is tannin. And there's two other key ones, but if you steep it for too long, which most people do when they're making black tea, they have a big pot, put in the tea, let it sit forever. Um, and so all those polyphenols, including tannin, will release a lot of astringency. And the polyphenols are what give the color and the flavor to the tea, but the astringency is very uncomfortable. Many of you have drinking, I'm sure, an oversteeped cup of black tea. But milk has, the milk protein casein, actually can bind, the protein binds with the polyphenols and it neutralizes that astringency. So in that way, milk is actually a great accompaniment to oversteeped black tea. Um, that doesn't mean you need to drink your black tea with milk. It's just that it's actually a very um, chemically sound combination that has now morphed into a tea drinking culture. But if you drink black tea in the traditional Chinese way um, and you get some really good quality leaves and you are really attentive to the timing and you don't oversteep your tea, you can enjoy wonderful black tea without any astringency and you don't any, need any milk to neutralize the astringency or enhance the flavor. Um, that tastes so nice. It's so um, warm and like a toasted, caramelly, honey, sweet, robust flavor. It's like a very deep, there's just like a lot of layers in the flavor. It's, it's delicious. Um, See, it will, they all went to the edges, so you can't really see. But this tea could easily be steeped three to five times with this proportion. I would say maybe three is closer to the right parameter. So three times if you stick to this proportion that I just did and the steeping time. Um, I hope you learned a lot about black tea today and you got some chemical enlightenment about astringency and milk proteins. Um, thanks for watching. Next week, we're going to be brewing an oolong tea, Phoenix Honey Orchid oolong tea. And while we're spending more time at home, visit asiastore.org and get to know more about the artisans and browse collections online, including my tea. Be sure and tag Asia Store on social media, hashtag InThisTogether, to show how we're more connected than ever. Thanks again and see you guys next week.